Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And in today's On Shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a model that is pretty fun and has a lot of cool shortcuts to learn about On Shape. So let's get into it here by going to TooTallToby.com. From TooTallToby.com, we're gonna click here to get started with free practice models. And here we can see we've got a repository of over 100 practice models challenges where we challenge you to go from a 2D drawing to a 3D model and calculate the mass of that model. Now there's about 20 challenges on here that are free for anyone with a free Too Tall Toby user account. And then if you really like the app, you can click here to upgrade to premium membership, which will unlock the entire library. Well, one of those free challenges is this one here, 24-01-10. So I'm gonna click here to practice and we can see here that 1,932 people have done at least one practice model and 556 people have completed this challenge. We can see here that the skills tested on this challenge are symmetry and we can see that there is already a video explaining how to do this model. So if you get stuck, you could watch that video. Now it might not be in the CAD system that you're using, but sometimes just watching somebody go through the model helps you figure out where you're getting stuck, even if it's not your CAD system. So now I am ready to go. I'm ready to do this challenge. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here. I'm going to click here to begin. And once I click here to begin, I'm going to say reveal drawing and go. We are in this challenge and we can see here that we are being asked, what is the mass of this model in XXX grams? And once we calculate that mass, we're going to enter it here into this field and hopefully we will get it correct. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of come up with a game plan real quick before we get started. I think it's always good when you go from a 2D drawing to a 3D model to start out with a game plan. And the first thing you want to ask yourself is where should the origin be located in this model? And I think that in the case of this model, we're going to locate the origin right down here on this corner. Now, the reason that we're doing this corner is because there are several dimensions that seem to be coming from that corner. You can see all these dimensions here on the front view and the model has a line of symmetry going right down through the center so you can see here we've got center line symmetry so for those reasons i think this is going to be a great location for the origin now once we decide on the origin we need to decide what our very first sketch is going to look like and i think that for this model it makes sense to just take a look at this thing from the front view and create this shape here almost like an l shape got kind of an angled line here going down this side at 15 degrees so that's going to be my first sketch and then i'm going to take that sketch and i'm going to extrude it using the symmetry option in on shape to extrude it at 85 millimeters now once i've got that geometry created i can get in here and kind of lop off this front shape i'll use a sketch here to kind of lop off that front shape of the geometry and then from there what i can do is i can create this geometry here so this radius 77 has the same center point as this radius 26. So I could get in here and create this shape, this kind of tombstone shape, and then I can extrude that up to this height here of nine millimeters. Then after I've got that shape created, maybe I could go in and I could add in this kind of cutout here on the back side of the part. I could add in this counter bore here. I could add in these counter bores here, and then I could finish up by adding in these fillets. So I know that that took a couple of minutes to come up with that game plan, but I think it's always important to just kind of think through the challenge, think about what steps you're gonna do, and then start doing the actual modeling. So let's take this 2D print and move it over to our second screen. Let's bring up our keyboard cam so you can see all of the different keyboard shortcuts that I'm using here in Onshape. And let's get into Onshape and create this document. So I'm gonna choose Create Document. I'm gonna call this 24-01-10 L Stop Simple. And this is being created in the public workspace in Onshape. So if you ever want to go and look up this model, you can just search the public workspace in Onshape and you can bring up my model and you can kind of follow along with and see how I created this model. So I'm gonna create this public document. And now the first thing that I always do, you know, just in case, I mean, I'm pretty confident as to what units Onshape is set to, but just in case you weren't sure, you can go up here to this little hamburger menu and you can choose workspace units. And then you can make sure that you're working in millimeters and you can make sure that you're working in grams so if you're confident that you are working the correct units you don't have to waste time checking that so now if you remember in our game plan we said we were going to start out on the front plane so i'm going to pick the front plane s 
begin the, the sketch, a new sketch. I'm going to press N, which gets me normal too. And then I'm going to press S again, and I'm going to launch the line command. I'm going to single click the origin, move over this way, single click again. And then I'm going to let go of my mouse and I'm going to type in 135. I'm going to move my mouse straight up. I'm going to single click again. I'm going to let go of my mouse and I'm going to type in 12. I'm going to move over in this way. I'm going to single click again. Now this dimension is going to be 135 minus 25. Enter. I'm going to move my mouse up in this direction. Now this dimension is going to be 65 minus 12. Press enter. I'm going to move my mouse over here. And then I'm going to close this thing off at an angle here. Now, one thing you want to remember is that when it comes to creating angle dimensions, you could create an angle dimension to a plane. So you don't have to get in here and create a little uh, uh, sketched center line to create that angle dimension. You could just press the S key, jump into your dimension command, and then create a dimension here from this line to this plane. And then you can type in the distance here of 15 degrees. Now, some of these dimensions are a little different from what is shown on the 2D print, like this 110 and this 53. So if you wanted to match up with the customer's design intent, you could get rid of those dimensions and then recreate them to match the drawing. This is something I would not do during a speed modeling challenge, but certainly something that you could do if you wanted to perfectly match up with the customer's design intent, kind of matching up with what they're asking for. So if you're following along as a tutorial, this is what your first sketch should look like, and that should all be sketched on the front plane. And then from there, you can press the S key. You can right mouse button on the S key menu and choose customize and then you can add the extrude command to your S key menu. This is a great way to save time and on shape. So when you're in sketch mode, you can just press the S key and right away jump into the extrude command. And here we can see we're extruding this thing. I'm going to use the tab key on my keyboard to advance through this box. So I'm going to tab down to where it says depth. I'm going to type in 85, tab, 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 down to where it says symmetric. I'm going to press the space bar, and there you see that that creates that extrusion as a mid-plane or a symmetric extrusion out to a total depth of 85 millimeters. So if you like that shortcut, if you like using the tab key to tab through there, and you like using the space bar to hit that check mark, hit the like button on this video. I'm going to hit enter to finish this command, and there we go. There is our first extrusion. So now I'm going to create my second extrusion. This time it'll be a remove. So I'm going to pick this face here. I'm going to press the S key, begin a sketch. I'm going to press the N key to get normal too. And I'm going to pick this edge, this edge, and this edge. And I'm going to choose this option here for use or convert, use project convert this little cube up here up at the top so i use that option and that gives me these one two three lines and then what i'm going to do is s key and jump into the arc command so here you can see i'm in the arc command this is using the three point arc so i'll single click here i'll single click here i'll move my mouse over this way and single click and then i'll let go of my mouse and i'll type in 77 for that radius now i can hit escape pick this arc and pick this line here and press T for tangent and pick this end point and this end point here and press V for vertical. And so now I'm ready to take that geometry and turn it into an extrusion. So S key extrude, but this time instead of choosing to add material, I'm going to choose to remove material. And for the depth of this extrusion, I'm going to say I want this to go through all. So you can see that on shape automatically picked up on this region, automatically picked up on this region here. This is looking pretty good. I hit the green check mark and oh yeah, we are ready to move on to the next feature. So remember the next feature is gonna be this little tombstone shape. So pick this face here, S key, begin a new sketch, get normal two, and I'm gonna press the S key again and begin the line command. Now this is a great workflow to practice. The workflow is you single click here on this edge, you move your mouse over this way, you single click again, you move your mouse away, and then you move your mouse back and without clicking on anything, you just put your mouse over this end point and then come away again. And you can see that that changes your, your sketch entity to be a tangent arc. See, if I put my mouse over this end point and move away, it's a line. If I put my mouse over this end point again and move away, it's a tangent arc. And that's a great workflow to learn. It's a great way to save some time because in engineering, we often convert from a line to a tangent arc to create things like lugs and slotted cuts and, and notch outs and things like that, a bend relief when you're working in sheet metal. So a really great workflow to learn. Single click on that point that's directly vertical to the original point, and then I can let go of my mouse and I can type in 26 for the radius of that arc. Move my mouse down in this direction, single click, move my mouse over here, single click. And now I can press escape to get out of the line command, pick this arc, 
pick this arc and then I can use the concentric relationship, but I can't remember the shortcut. So I'll just fly out my relationships here. Here it is shift O, shift O for concentric, like a capital O. So concentric, and look at that, that sketch went all black, meaning that sketch is fully defined or fully constrained. And this is what your third sketch should look like. If you're following, following along like a tutorial, this is what that third sketch should look like. So now we are ready to take that sketch and we're ready to extrude it. So S key extrude, tab, 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 nine, enter, enter. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. And you can see that what that did was it took that extrusion and it added that material and it brought it up to a height of nine millimeters. So now we're gonna basically do the same thing with that tombstone shape, but we're gonna do it here on this face. So pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal two, and then S key, begin the line command. And we're gonna single click here on this upper edge, move our mouse down, single click again, let go of our mouse. Now we know the depth to that tangency point is 20, enter, Move our mouse away, come back and touch the end point, move away again, come all the way around to 180. And uh, if it doesn't pick up, sometimes you can kind of like pick this end point to kind of wake it up. There we go, 180. So it didn't pick it up the first time, but it did the second time. And single click, and then you're gonna let go of your mouse and you're gonna type in a radius 15, enter. You're gonna move your mouse up this way, up to this edge, single click, back over to here, single click, hit escape. And then what you can do is you can move this dimension and then you can single click this point, the center of that arc, single click this point, let go of your mouse, press V, V for vertical. Look at that, nice fully defined sketch. We didn't have to go back in and add any dimensions. We added them on the fly using that nice auto dimension shortcut. So now we can press the S key, go into extrude, and this one is gonna use an end condition here of through all. So through all, and it's not, we're not adding material. Here you see what we've got is this option here for add. We are removing material. So we choose remove again, just like we did up here on the front of the part. Remove, and we hit the green check mark, and look at that, that is looking good. So now we need to add the locations for our um, whole wizard holes or our whole hole tool. You've got the hole tool here in on shape. So we're going to add these holes. We're going to add some counter bore holes, but let's add in some sketch points here before we get started. And uh, we can do this using a rectangle. This is a nice little shortcut you can do in on shape. So pick this face. S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal to S key. I'm gonna do a center point rectangle here, center point rectangle. I'm gonna single click here directly above the origin, move my mouse out this way, single click again, and then I'm gonna let go of my mouse and I'm gonna type in 55 for the width, and I'm gonna type in 10 for the depth of that rectangle. And then I'm gonna hit escape and pick this upper edge of the part and this line of the rectangle and press I for coincident. Now what I've done is I've set myself up perfectly to locate those holes. So now I can exit this sketch. I can hit the green check mark here to exit that sketch. And then I can launch the hole command. So here is the hole command in on shape. And the hole type is gonna be counter bore. The unit system here is gonna be metric. So metric, counter bore. And then the through hole size is going to be five, tab, 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 10, tab, five for the depth of that counter bore. And then what we can do is we can come out here on the screen and we can just pick these sketch points. So this point here, this point here, and look at that. We have perfectly located those counter bores. So I can hit the check mark there. I could hide that sketch that we used for the rectangle. Looks like it actually got hidden automatically. That's nice on shape, just coming through and automatically hiding that sketch. I like that. And so now all we need to do is add that other larger counter bore and then add those fillets on the front of the part. So for that larger counter bore, we'll go into the whole command again. Tab, 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 tab. This is gonna be uh, a d diameter here for the through hole of 15. Tab, tab, tab. The uh, counter bore is gonna have a diameter of 30. Tab, the depth is gonna be 12. And then here, instead of choosing sketch points, we're gonna choose this button here, mate connectors. So we're gonna choose a mate connector and the mate connector is gonna be right at the center of this edge. So you can put your mouse over this edge. You could probably move it kind of to the center also. I usually do this by picking the, the circular edge to get the mate connector in the center. So single click there and look at that preview, letting us know that that counter bore is being added there. That looks great. Hit the green check mark and there we go. We are done with that counter bore as well. And so now we can get into our fillet command. So fillet. S key fillet, get into our fillet command here. And we can say that we want that fillet command to be applied here on this front edge of the part and on this front edge of the part. And we can say we want that fillet radius to be a radius of 20. 
and that preview looks good. And now at this point, what we could do is we can press P to hide our planes. We can press Shift P if we want to hide all of our reference geometry, like the origin. We can come down here to the name of the part. We can right mouse button and say Edit Appearance. And we can make this appearance kind of match up or get close to what the customer gave us. It's kind of like a deeper orange there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The customers always like it when you match up with their actual part colors. And uh, then what we can do is we can right mouse button again on that part one and we can choose assign material. And here we're going to go into the custom library of Two Tall Toby custom materials. And once we get in here, we're going to say that we want to assign the custom material of ABS coming from the Two Tall Toby library. So it matches up with the material density on the title block. And then down here, kind of behind where the clock is, you've got this icon here. This is your mass properties icon. So I'm gonna click that icon. I'm gonna choose this body of this part. And it looks like it's coming up with a mass of 204 grams. So I'm gonna come down here into this uh, entry box for mass 204, enter. And oh yeah, whenever you see that little purple, actually, let me move this onto the main screen. Here we go. Whenever you see that purple box, that means that you got it correct. So congratulations, this answer is correct. 204 grams is correct. The total time was 14 minutes and 23 seconds. And if we hit submit, we will get one point on the community scoreboard. So submit and here we go. We did it, we got it correct. And if we scroll down here, we can see that our time was 14 minutes and 23 seconds, 14 minutes and 23 seconds. So kind of up here and we can see that the average time is 11 minutes and 47 seconds. Wow, that is pretty darn fast. And then the current fastest time, Ram Bros. Wow, the world champion of 3D CAD speed modeling has the fastest time on this particular challenge. So maybe what I could do is I could hit the try again button and I could try this thing again and see if maybe I could get a faster time. Maybe if I try again, I could get my time down under the average time here. But for now, I'm happy with this. I'm just happy that I was able to get through and complete it. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like this video. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you learned anything from this video. And of course, be sure to check out tutaltobycom slash practice where you can try this challenge and you can try 19 other challenges for free. And then if you really enjoy the app, you can sign up for the premium membership and access the entire library. So I will look forward to seeing all of you on the completionist scoreboard. And of course, I'll look forward to seeing everybody in the next tutorial.